This study skills session aims to give you some tips on searching online for information. As more information is stored digitally, it sometimes feels harder than ever to know how to find what you're looking for, or even to know how to start searching for something in the first place. I've listed some reasons that might be useful when you're researching online. Have you found yourself in need of a specific piece of evidence to support a good idea? Have you longed to find out more about a topic that interests you? Have you ever wanted to add a bit more sparkle and pizzazz to your bibliography? Have you ever wanted to be more adventurous in your research? This study skill session seeks to help you. I aim to show you some tricks of the trade and also specifically to show you how to use the advanced search function of an academic website. So don't spend too long searching at one sitting. Sometimes it's much easier to conduct initial research in short, sharp bursts. So how can you find more evidence to support your ideas? Well, don't ignore what you've got already. Look through your notes, go back to source material you've looked at, and then you can search online or in a library for material. And you can use these guidelines to help you. Don't forget that a bibliography is a really useful place to search for the names of books or articles, to seek out authors that might help you to research and to develop your knowledge of a particular subject. Be creative when you're searching online. Don't go to the first website that you come to. Look out for academic websites. Look out for subject specific websites. If you feel uneasy about any website or any link that you click on, shut it down, move away immediately. And try always to keep a record of your search pathway so that you can follow it up later and find out how to retrace your steps. If you want to narrow down your search and save time, you can use the tricks such as using inverted commas to group many different search terms into one single term. You can also use a plus sign and link that group of uh, disparate terms to another group or another single word to narrow down the scope of your search. And this can often bring you much more useful sets of results. Again, don't forget, keep a record of the search terms that you use and the websites that you visit so you can follow up later. Here I have selected the Reading Experience Database, an academic website which records experiences of reading throughout the centuries. And I'm going to show you how to use a search function, an advanced search function, using this website. So first of all, click on search. Then you'll need to scroll down past basic search until you come to advanced search. Click on advanced search or just follow the pathway down depending on the website. You'll be guided through the search process. You will be offered many different options that you can select to narrow down your search. Don't feel you have to click on every single one of the boxes provided. Sometimes you'll be more successful at first if you only click on a few of the boxes and narrow your search just a little. As ever, remember to record the options that you have selected so that you can follow up your search later. This shows you the page that you will be taken to on the Reading Experience database and gives you an indication of some of the boxes that are available for you to select. 
And as you can see, some of these I've just left blank. So I haven't looked, asked for a specific named reader. I filled in a date range. I've said I want to find out about a reader and not an author of a book. I've said that uh, I want a particular age range of my reader, a child. And I've ticked the to specify the socioeconomic group of my reader. And then I will scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page and press submit. And the website does the magic for me. I get my results. And I also find that I've got a really useful citation which the website has produced for me. And this tells me the source of the information that I've just found. And I can use this in my footnote and in my bibliography to show the full extent of my research. So practice finding search terms that you can use. You can go to the Reading Experience database. I have given you the web address here. And as an exercise to practice, you could see if you could find an example of a male reader who enjoyed reading Jane Eyre. So have a think about what you would need to select out of all those many options to succeed in that search. If you want to contribute your own reading experiences, you can record instances of books you've really enjoyed in the following link. And you can contribute to research for the people to find in the future. Finally, don't give up. Sometimes searching online can be quite frustrating. Sometimes you'll have a day when things don't really go very well. Uh, but go away, do something else, come back again, and you might find you're very much more select, uh, successful another time. And I'm going to say it once more, do remember to keep a record of the names of the websites that you look at, any links you follow, and also keyword you use in your searches, because this will help you to follow up the information that you've discovered and find it again another time or even to pick up your search and take it in a new direction. Good luck searching.